In today's video, I'm going to talk about one of the most overlooked concepts and techniques, which is choosing the colors for your base colors. And I'm going to do this while painting the Gene Stealer Aberrants. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connecting to the great mind. Welcome back to the Studio Collectors. We are back into the groove of regular content production and we have new videos coming out every Wednesday and sometimes Monday too. So you don't want to miss that out. So why don't you pay the class fee of one like and one sub so that we can start talking about one of the most overlooked concepts which is choosing the base colour. So this has been really covered a lot in many miniature painting channels and they mostly focus on techniques of how to thin your paint and how to put paint onto your miniature. However, this is something I feel that is often overlooked which is why we choose certain colours as base colours. And in this small little experiment where I paint two jeans dealer aberrants side by side, you can see how just by changing the base colour, we can achieve totally different and amazing results. So why is selecting the base colour really important? I'm going to summarise it to three points. The first point is acrylic paints are generally translucent in nature. Because they are translucent, what you get, you always always get to see a hint of the under layers. Even if you have done multiple multiple layers below, you will always see a hint of the base colour. And this is going to affect how you paint in the subsequent stages. The second point that I like to bring up is it really affects the style and the final outcome. When you use a very desaturated base colour, you can achieve the very grim dark and very serious tone while choosing a vibrant colour really allows you to achieve that very dynamic, saturated look that you are after. And thirdly, the base colours will also guide the colours that you use subsequently. Because, well for this experiment, I'm going to only be changing the base colour. However, if I were to be painting normally, I will compensate the additional saturation that I'm getting from the base colours with, well, slightly more saturated colours so that the shadows will look a little bit more coherent in my painting. I liken this to like shooting an arrow because the base stage is really really far from the end goal. Sometimes we really have to compensate and make sure we aim a little higher so that the arrow flies up, goes down and hits the target. And if conventionally what you would do is, oh I want to paint green colour so I'll just choose standard green colours. I'll just shoot straight, sometimes the arrow will fall short of what you expected. So similarly, I'm going to apply the same strategy when painting the two jeans dealers. This is a summary of what's going to happen in the video. So as you can see on this one, the first one has a slightly more desaturated base colour. But what you can see here, the second one, I just changed the base colour and it looks so much more saturated and yeah, achieves that very dynamic look that many artists have really really done really well like Sergio Calvo and this is something that I've always wanted to do in my paintings but I just couldn't find the way because by the time I was into the layering stages I realised that ah, it's too late to change all the colours so that's why I really feel that this is something that is very important and this is something that I learned over the break while painting my own miniatures. So without further ado, I'm going to start painting this jeans layer aberrant and I'm going to be using a rather desaturated and dull base colour. So these are the colours that I'll be using right here. Alternatively, these Games Workshop colours will work just fine. Okay, so just gather up all these colours and let's get painting the first jeans layer aberrant where I'll be using the desaturated base colours right now. So as I mentioned, we are going to start off with a pretty desaturated base colour. The base colour that I've used is neutral grey and matte red. I want to make sure that it is of a slightly middle value and well, just more desaturated. So moving on, these are the layers that I'll be using. I'm going to be using dark grey mixed in with a little bit of blue violet to create the muscle colours. For this point, Right here, I'm painting it the same way as how I would paint up the Tau Pathfinders, which is well identifying the more complex shapes and the planes that are exposed to light. And that's how I'm placing the highlights. I think this is something that I've learned and developed over, well, just recently. And I'd like to share with you guys. If you want to learn more about how I find and place highlights, 
there's going to be a video on the Space Marines on how I light up Space Marines coming out really soon where I go into detail and you don't want to miss that out. So how come these base colors are really important? As you can see, the base colors that I'm using tend to be a little bit more desaturated on this miniature and why this is relevant to your miniature painting journey it is because if you look at the Games Workshop range of base colors, the base colors tend to be a little bit on the desaturated side, which is similar to the colors that I'm using here. And if you are looking to achieve that very vibrant, very dynamic looking colors that you very often see on the internet from artists such as Taha, Sergio Calvo, they're going to be very, very hard pressed to achieve those because well, the base colors that we have all been introduced to and very used to using from Games Workshop tend to be very desaturated. So moving on, because the subsequent colors tend to be even more desaturated, because you are going to try to add more of the white to increase the value, inherently that's how your miniature is going to turn out. The miniature is going to turn out little bit more on the desaturated realistic looking side as you can see when I'm adding in a little bit of basic skin tone to the mix even if basic skin tone tends to be a bit more saturated and a little bit more well towards the orange side when added in to other colors because it does have white and grey pigments it tends to desaturate the colors and as you can see even if it increases the value it looks like the base color, while it is already desaturated, is losing even more saturation. And the final product is going to turn out very grayish and very, well, dirty looking. But I guess this is another style of painting that you might want to achieve. And yeah, right here, if you can see, I'm just pushing up the values even more using Luminous Flash. Because of course the values are higher, that's number one. But number two, because the values are higher, they also have more grey and white pigment in them. And they are taking away every single bit of colour. And what you are left with is a very grey and finished miniature. Okay, that's enough of me droning about the first uh, hypermorph. Uh, I'd like to draw your attention here to something that is very easily missable which is the light placement. I think for the light placements, some advice that I can give you is you can just identify the areas that are exposed to the light and just paint them in without considering the geometric shapes. I think this geometric shape thing has been too well drilled into many painters and more often than not, we become painters that paint in geometric shapes rather than painting the actual forms on the miniature. Okay? So after placing in these colors, well, you can see the finish is very gray and well, just not very appealing in my opinion, at least when you are trying to achieve very, very dynamic looking colors. So even for the shadows, in order to ensure that the shadows are coherent, I'm going to be using dark gray with blue violet. And at this point of time, I'm just painting in the shadows very boldly and trying to showcase the shadow side and the form side of the miniature so that while it's not as eye popping the contrast still allows it to stand out on the tabletop and there we have it this is the first jean stealer aberrant painted using the desaturated color scheme as you can see looking really realistic looking very grim dark but let's see what happens after I change the base color to something a little bit more saturated. So wow, we have already completed the first Jeans Slayer Aberrant and up next, we're going to be changing the base color. I'm going to try to aim a little bit off because at the end of the day, I'm trying to achieve this cartoony and dynamic saturated look. 
So I'm going to use the most saturated magenta I have in my range, which is the Chimera magenta. Why Chimera colors tend to be a bit more saturated is because they are made with pure pigments and there's no black and white pigment in there so they really retain their saturation even after drying. Okay, so I'm going to be roughly using the same colors right here. So if you already have those colors, fret not. However, here's a refresher of the colors that I'll be using. Okay, so let's gather up all these colors and let's get painting the second Jean Steeler Aberrant right now. Okay, so here comes the fun part. I'm going to be using pure Chimera color mixed in with a little bit of salmon, a little bit of dark grey. So, as I mentioned, this is the only change. The rest of the colors, I tend to use very similar colors, so you wouldn't expect too big of a change, but, well, the most important color here is this base color. As you can see, it's just popping straight out of the page. And remember at the introduction when I spoke about the arrows and shooting arrows and aiming off this is me aiming off creating a very super saturated base color because i know that my subsequent layers and highlights are going to be more desaturated so as you can see using the same colors here i'm going to be using salmon dark gray and a little bit of medium rust here i know they are not exactly the same colors but they achieve very similar effects I have to compensate slightly by using slightly more saturated colors here to ensure that the layers don't look too out of place. But subsequently, the next few layers will be using pretty similar colors. Okay, at this point of time, I'm trying to make sure that the shapes are in accordance to the light that is coming from the top right hand corner and identifying the planes and I'm identifying the shapes that reflect the volumes and I'm paying particular attention to those. Right here, as you can see, while sketching out the shapes, I'm using a very, very small brush. This is a size zero or double zero if I remember correctly. And this allows me to place in the shapes very precisely and understand the form of the model a lot more. So moving on, I'm using Salmon and Medium Rust here. I'm going to be placing the highlights here. So while placing in the highlights, I'm making sure that I still recall the form. And as you can see right here, even while using very similar colors, I'm achieving this very cartoony, very dynamic animation look that you would see some pretty good painters online do so. So, if you reference this, you can think about painters such as Sergio Carvo. Sergio Carvo does very, very dynamic color ranges. Angel Giraudes does something similar also. And I think this is the first step to me learning to paint with more saturated and more dynamic colors. So moving on, I'm just going to be further refining this, adding in a little bit of pale sand, which in the other stage I used a little bit of luminous flash to boost the values. So gradually what you can see right here is me pushing up the values, but still retaining the saturation right here. So this saturation retention, I feel, is something that I have gravely missed out in a lot of my work and I would want to give you guys the advice just really go to the extreme for the saturation first because subsequently you're going to lose a lot of saturation layers which I mentioned previously okay so just cleaning up the details here and very shortly you will see the turnaround of this Gene Steeler Abron, which I have painted. And there we have it. This is the finished version of the Gene Steeler Abron. As you can see, just from one very big change in the base coat, you can see that this really affects the entire painting process and the entire painting style. 
if you are looking for something so vibrant, always go for something extreme first and then tone it back later rather than trying to catch back the saturation in a later stage. Oh, you're still here. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I hope you found this concept really useful because this is something that I felt that I've discovered and I really want to share with you guys. If you want to support the channel even further, yeah, you know what to do. Go to the Patreon and become a Patreon. Every single dollar that you give to the Patreon goes into producing videos such as this so that we all get to become better miniature painters together. I'd like to thank all my Patreons for allowing me to do this and I hope to see you in the next miniature painting video. See you. Oh,